My name is Carl Kibley, and I'm a member of the data science team at the Management Performance Hub. Today we'll be talking about using Matchit, which is a, a code library in R, to identify a control group for a research study. Let's start first with a thought experiment. So let's say we're gardening. We've just purchased a new fertilizer that we want to try out in our plants. We're interested in measuring the amount of growth our plants see because of the fertilizer. So you go out to the garden one week and, and, and give the fertilizer to the plant and then come back five weeks later and see that our plant has grown five inches. We're feeling pretty good about the fertilizer we purchased, but is it really safe to say that, that the plant grew five inches because of the fertilizer that we put on it? On the other hand, what if we came back in five weeks and, and the plant had actually shrunk two inches? It would be right to conclude that we've we've purchased the, the worst fertilizer possible that actually cause, causes plants to shrink. Well, if you if you've done some gardening before, you know that 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 plant growth has more. There's there's more factors in plant growth than just whether plants receive fertilizer or not. These other factors can cause our plants to grow or shrink, um, to flourish or or perish, and um, we can call these um, in research speak. These these factors are called confounding variables. So if we want to measure the, the amount of growth our plant sees because of the fertilizer, which we can call um, the intervention in this case, we need to find some way to adjust our measurement of growth for these confounding variables. So in the gardening world, you know, confounders could be rain and sunshine, which, which cause our plant to grow and flourish. Or maybe a squirrel visits our garden and disrupts the root system, or we get a late frost, and that leads to plant uh, it could lead to our plants to, to actually shrink, even if they've received fertilizer. So one way to, to isolate um, the amount of, of growth due to the fertilizer is by using a, a control group um, to adjust for these confounding variables. So this example you see, maybe we give, give the blue plant here the fertilizer, but not the red plant. Both plants experience the same confounding, confounding factors of the, over the course of the five weeks. We come back and say, um, that, the, that the plant that received the fertilizer grew four inches and the plant that didn't grew two. And, and from that, we can estimate that the fertilizer led to two inches of growth. It's kind of a fun uh, thought experiment um, uh, to get our minds warmed up on these concepts. But now let's let's talk about how we use uh, a similar study design uh, in, uh, on an actual project at MPH. For this program, we're, we're, we're looking to measure uh, the career impact of, of certificate programs that are eligible for the Workforce Ready Grant program. So just a, a bit of background on the Workforce Ready Grant program. In the fall of 2017, Indiana launched, launched this program as a part of its Next Level Jobs initiative. So Indiana residents who have not earned a post-secondary degree are eligible to re receive funding that covers tuition and, and fees for a list of qualifying programs. And these eligible programs are aligned with, with high demand industries in the state manufacturing to health sciences to transportation and logistics should note too that um, at the time of the study we, we weren't able to actually identify individual which individuals received funding from the state but we could um, so, so in this case we're, right, we're we're measuring the career impact of of, indiv indiv of individuals who might have received funding and, and seeing that the the impact on, on earnings the earning an eligible certificate program had So in, so in this case, we're asking a very similar question. We're, we're still asking a question about growth, and we're interested to see, um, you know, do in individuals earn higher wages after completing a workforce rate grant eligible certificate? Does that certificate lead to a wage bump um, in that individual's career? In this case, um, so as you can see in the data, we can see um, what the date an, in an individual earned a certificate, and we assume an 18-month period before that to, to take the courses necessary to complete the program in a six month buffer afterwards to allow for some time for that individual to, you know, maybe find a new job or switch industries, maybe get a promotion with that credential. And, and for for the sample that we had, we, we do see that the median individual uh, sees a wage increase of about $10,000 from that that before wage period and to that after wage period. Um, you know, from our garden example, we know measuring the estimate they're estimating the, the impact is, of the certificate isn't that simple. So who's the control group in this case and, and what confounding variables would comparing to a control group um, help us to, to adjust for? 
So in this case, uh, control groups would ideally be made up of individuals who are similar to, to certificate completers, but have not earned a certificate. Because running, you know, running an experiment that would withhold access to educa education from some individuals um, and, and give it to others would be unethical. We, we must identify these control individuals in, in a different way. I think finding these control individuals and, and, and using their, their wage growth to adjust our estimate of the certificate's impact um, helps us control for at least two major confounders. One is just the normal progression of earnings you'd, you'd expect individuals to see as they gain experience in, at a particular employer or an industry. Um, maybe they're promoted, move into a different job, things like that. Um, as you see here, the, there's a, a two-year gap between our before wages and after wages, so you'd expect some wage growth over that time period. The second major thing is just this macro, larger macroeconomic forces like industry level shifts, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, larger larger uh, social forces that, that can lead someone to, to earn more or earn less at their job that has, has nothing to do with their education necessarily, but is, is, is just all larger um, movements in the economy. So to, to find these control individuals, we first start with, with the data on post-secondary credentials from the Commission for Higher Education and quarterly wage records from the Department of Workforce Development. And I just want to quickly pause here and, and, and give a shout out to these other state agencies. We're really grateful for your partnership and, and sharing of the data that we can do this work. Um, so thank you. And from those data sets, we can identify uh, certificate completers and potential control individuals with sufficient wage records. So. From, from these two data sets, we have just under 2,700 workforce ready grant eligible certificate completers, 1.5 million wage earners that, that haven't earned a post secondary credential. Both of these groups you know, have consistent wages. We can get a good good measurement of, of their before earnings and, and their, after earn, their after earnings. And from there, we use the, the Match It library to identify uh, specific control individuals that are matched to each of the certificate completers. So using this library, we um, can set parameters so that the control and the, and the the control individual and the certificate completer always are starting uh, working in the in the same industry, and then the algorithm will find a similar individual based on their age, their starting starting wages, and the the county of their employer. So, for example, certificate completer is 29 years old, making 35,000 at a manufacturing employer in Bartholomew County. It's matched with a 31 year old making 42,000 at a manufacturing employer in St. Joseph County. So not, not exactly the same, but you know, a similar individual across these across these attributes. Let's take a look at how the, the syntax of the actual function. So this is the the, um, the actual code to run this function using match it. Um, so if you're familiar with R, you see the, the data frame, the output data frame to the left of that arrow, and then the match it function itself is on the right. Take a second to, to walk through each of the parameters. But the top um, is a kind of an R style logistic regression equation. So you have the output variable on the left, you know, whether that individual earned a certificate or not. And then the, the predictor variables on the right, before wages or pre-wages, the age, it, the their their starting industry, their starting employer county. Um, so technically with what's what the model's doing is is calculating. Uh, a sort of likelihood score that an, an individual would have completed a certificate and then matching each certificate completer to a control individual who is equally or similarly likely to complete a certificate. And this this matching method in study design is called per, 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 propensity score matching. The second parameter is just where you, you uh, identify the data frame um, that, that that is to be run through the matching algorithm. This, this would contain both completers and potential control individuals. The next is the method for matching. Uh, match it library offers uh, several different matching methods, but if you select nearest, that'll find the control individual that has the closest likelihood score using that logistic regression equation um, and does this without replacement. So once a control individual is selected um, from the data set, they will not be selected again. The next parameter, uh, you can put column names in here for exact, and that 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 is where you can choose uh, an exact match on some columns. So in this case, selected employer industry, and so that ensures that when these matches are being made, 
the completer and control uh, individual will always start in the same the same uh, the same industry. Finally, you can set verbose equal equal to true. That just tells the algor algorithm to pr print status updates as it's finding the matches. So you can get a sense of of where the the algorithm's at in its process. It's just helpful, you know, depending on the size of the data set. Could take uh, several minutes to run, so it's nice to, to have a, a status update as you go. Here it is all again. Um, yeah, so what do we find? So we found that as we, you know, matched this roughly 2,700 completers with their roughly 2,700 control individuals, found that the the control individuals also saw uh, a, a wage increase at the median of $4,500. So then similar to the, the plan example at the beginning, we can then estimate that earnings earning certificate leads to a wage increase of about $6,100 overall. We wanted to go a bit deeper to this analysis. You know, it's it's helpful to see the wage increase for all across all completers. We know there's other, other attributes, such as the, the type of certificate that was earned, individual's age, kind of their movement through industries pre Pre um, certificate completion and post, um, and these these things also have an impact on on the kind of the estimated certificate impact that we see here. So first, we looked at the sector, the kind of the industry sector of that that certificate. So if we again, if we lump them all together, all all the certificate types, you see that roughly sixty one hundred dollar certificate impact in the top right of this table. So in each case here, we're we're subtracting the median. Uh, control subtracting the the control median wage wage change from the completer median wage change to get that estimated certificate impact. You see, there's variation depending on what type of certificate an, indiv an individual earned. So, in transportation, logistics, and building construction at the higher end, and, and IT and business services at the lower end. But another another key factor is an individual's age at the time of their completion. You see, generally here we have. Um, each bubble uh, gives the estimated certificate impact. So we've already done that that subtraction to get these values. Um, still have the the five industry sectors here in the colors, and then uh, along the x-axis, uh, we've broken individuals down into into various age categories. Um, just also note that the size of the dot indicates the count of of certificate completers for that particular industry uh, age age bracket combination. See overall, um, younger completers uh, see higher wage gains than 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 older certificate completers. I think probably some of this is likely due to the fact that that you know maybe some of the younger completers their their pre wages are or maybe them you know represent them working part time you know, at the end of high school or right after high school and then they're you know two years later in their post wages maybe they're working full time um, in, in in a in a different job and so that that could account for some of these high higher wage gain uh, numbers. Um, I also think it's interesting to note the seeing the purple, the health health sciences is, is, is the one industry that um, follows a different pattern. You know, the highest certificate impact was actually for individuals in the 30 to 39 age category. I think this suggests, we'll talk a little bit about this more later. Um, it kind of suggests that maybe these health sciences certificates are functioning a bit differently than some of the other categories. So next, we can also, um, you know, not only break individuals out by, by age and the the type of certificate they've earned, but also how they're moving throughout industries in the state. And so, we have five industry paths we'll look at here. Um, so this is just looking at, you know, what, what industry were ind individuals working in before earning a certificate, and what individuals were they working in afterward. And the first one here is um, individuals who are working in either the retail or the food and accommodation industry to start and, and we're working in that industry in their post or after wage wage time period as well. So just to break this visual down a bit in, in the back, we have the overall um, wage distribution for all workers in the state, um, annual wages um, without without a post-secondary credential. Should note what the this is limited to Indiana public institutions. So we have access to in our data. So if someone has a, a bachelor's degree from Notre Dame, for instance, we would they would show up in this distribution, even though they do have a post-secondary credential. We have this data, you know, this distribution to give some context for how individuals are moving um, through through this distribution, at least at the median. Um, 
and the, the overall distribution median is $36,400, and that's represented by that short gray bar in the bottom in the middle. Then these larger bars um, represent the median, median annual earnings for both certificate completers and control individuals. The dotted lines give you the, that pre or before wages, and then the, the solid lines give you the after, median after wages. And so all that to say, you can see here that both certificate completers and control individuals at the median work were making similar amounts of money at, in their pre, pre-wage pre category, but then in that post, they're also still making similar. So that, that certificate, earning that certificate, if you're, if you're staying uh, working in retail or food and accommodation, doesn't seem to lead to much, much additional movement up through this distribution. A couple other paths had a different story though. So for instance, in individuals that stay in healthcare who are working in healthcare before and after, you can see the both pre-wage lines are right on top of each other, along with the post wages for control individuals. But individuals who completed the certificate moved uh, you know, at the median significantly up the distribution to just above the overall distribution median. The similar story for for folks who move from retail and food and to, to healthcare, or from retail and food and accommodation to manufacturing. Um, I think I'd just like to point out too in the state of manufacturing. I think ideally, both of the pre uh, median wages, those dotted lines, would ideally be um, exactly overlapping. Um, but you can see that there's a gap to start with the, the group that stayed working in manufacturing. I think that. Um, just demonstrates the, the limitations of the matching of this matching study design. And so I don't think there's much we can can uh, conclude from, from that that graph at least. Okay, so just to kind of briefly wrap up, um, Matcha is a you know a library in R that can be used to identify control groups um, in, in 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 studies like this where we're running uh, a formal experiment would would run into you know, issues with feasibility or, or just ethical issues. Um, so it can be used to identify control groups using that log logistic regression that's baked into the match it function. Then you can use um, the outcome, you know, the measurement of the outcome metric for that that control group to adjust your measurement of, of the, the group, the outcome uh, measure for the group that received the intervention uh, to get a better estimate of, of, of the actual impact of that intervention. In this case, the, the impact of earning a certificate on wage on wages. I finally just have a couple of resources here. If you um, want to access the, the PowerPoint presentation, there's a, a link here to official documentation for the Match It library. There's, there's a lot of other things um, that this library can do. Um, one example of using propensity score matching in R to answer a research question similar to this. And then finally, a, a link to a, a more academic uh, journal article paper on on the on the um, kind of the logic and the math of propensity score matching. So thanks so much. I hope this uh, with, hope this content was helpful for you as you're uh, doing working on your own research projects. And I'd be happy to connect if you have any any questions at all or I want to discuss the content further. Thanks so much.